This is our Disney News Hour, and many thanks for joining us with the news. I'm Shifar Aulako, and do stay with us. The Speaker of the House of People's Representatives, Tagesay Chafo, and Speaker of the House of Federation held talks with the visiting American Congresswoman and her team. The two speakers briefed the Congresswoman, Karen Bass, and her delegation about the real situation in Ethiopia to clear confusions which is being manifested among U.S. higher officials. The visiting Congresswoman has also held talks with the Minister of Peace, Mufariat Kamil. Mufariat, on the occasion, elaborated on activities regarding immediate humanitarian aid relief that's being provided by the government of Ethiopia since the war broke out in Tigray. Mufariat, however, expressed grave concerns over the failure on international humanitarian agencies in ensuring that immediate aid relief reaches those affected due to the violence waged by the terrorist TPLF. Based on the daily increase of numbers of people in need of humanitarian relief, the minister has urged the selected international aid agencies to provide immediate humanitarian services, particularly in those areas that the government is not able to reach as per the agreements they have entered into with Ethiopia. Members of the U.S. Congress women affirm commitment to Ethiopia's sovereignty. Conferring with Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister Demek Amakonen, the Congress women led by Karen Bass said, the U.S. will remain Ethiopia's strong partner in various areas. Alulata Klamara reports. Ethiopia and the U.S. America have enjoyed bilateral and multilateral partnership since the inception of their diplomatic ties dating back to 1903. They maintain their relationship despite changing forms of government in the two countries. And even at this critical time, these countries want to further strengthen their long-standing partnership. This is what the U.S. American Congresswoman has shared to Foreign Affairs Minister Demek Amakon in their discussion today. Spokesperson of the ministry, Dina Mufti, explained the discussion this way. The head of the delegation, the delegation reaffirmed uh, their positions of uh, strengthening relationship between the two countries, the commitment on the part of the United States to uh, maintain Ethiopian sovereignty and uh, they have pledged to continue with that uh, gesture. Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister Demek Amakon briefed the genesis of the situation in northern part of the country, according to Dina. He also briefed her on the genesis of the current uh, conflict in the northern part of the country, uh, particularly how the junta forces have left the reform process that was going on in the country and they kept on terrorizing different parts of the country and uh, fomenting violences here and there. Uh, he reaffirmed Ethiopia's positions for uh, peaceful solutions and uh, he mentioned he briefed her also uh, on the measures taken by the government uh, with regard to the uh, unilateral ceasefire and uh, the intention of that uh, the objective of that ceasefire. Well, a large number of Ethiopians are signing a petition, what they call White Envelope to White House, in response to the U.S. mounting pressure against Ethiopia. There is, there is maybe some issues that we, we cooperate, we integrate, but such kinds of uh, uh, intervening on the internal issues is unacceptable. In Ethiopian citizens, in Ethiopian context, we, uh, we, we, we respect America, we respect our relation, but uh, we don't need to compromise on our internal issue, on our sovereignty, on our uh, uh, territorial integrity. This should be known in all of the, the international community, including of the United Nations of America.
TPL insurgents have completely destroyed the Maket Hospital at the town of Maket in North Wolozon. Forces of the criminal clique caused severe destruction to the hospital, which was formerly serving 350,000 residents in the area. They've also looted all the medical equipment and medicines before destroying it. That's according to administrators of the hospital. Patients who had to get uh, close follow-ups have died because of absence of medicines and equipment, doctors have told ETV. Now, media, communication, and leaders of the defense force, including government officials, uh, visited the army and the front lines, appreciating the sacrifice of the youth for defending the unity and sovereignty of Ethiopia. Their visit is instrumental to boost the morale of the front line fighters, and they underscore that the brutal attacks of the TPLF were severe and therefore overthrowing this mafia is the only alternative to all Ethiopians. Daniel Kassan has compiled their views as follows. Juntao inda tak abbara aukotal. You have shown us your determination to pay all the sacrifice in order to defend the unity and sovereignty of Ethiopia. This is a clear message to all the enemy forces from abroad and within the country. All the heroic deeds you performed in the entire war front sends clear message to both. Ethiopia cannot surrender to evil forces that bent abolish its integrity and unity. We are duty bound to narrate your heroic deeds and gallantry performances in the war front. We have seen the determination of Ethiopian fighters actively engaged in the war front. Media communication and defense leaders visited areas which are still red lines in the war front. The surprising thing is the determination of the army comprised from all groups to defend Ethiopian dignity. <laughs> It is just the mysterious interaction between the lion and the rat. When the rat enters a lion's mouth, it can't escape. As you know, the enemy we face is something a devil. They are blunt from the very beginning. Their end is also devilish and blunt again. Such heinous acts could not be done by a healthier person. They have gathered here from all corners of the country to defend Ethiopia's dignity as your fathers did in the Battle of Adwa. This is an opportune time for all Ethiopians to sacrifice for sovereignty of the country. I'm so proud of you. You are making a remarkable history. I would like to appreciate the media professionals for coming here at the war front to visit the Ethiopian fighters comprised from all groups. This is very special to witness the gallantry performance of real Ethiopians. The media and communication officials are playing their role by exposing the terrorist group to the international community. Uh, 
ሰርፍ ሰርፍ በሃዲያ ብሄር የሴቶች ሙያ መለኪያ ዋን ነው አተካና ነውና ይሄንን መስራት ካልቻልሽ ባላታገኝም ቢያገባሽ ራሱ ይፈታሻል ነው ይያሉኝ ያሉ እና ለሁሉም ድርሻ አለው በመስቀል ላይ ትክትፎ ይከታፊና በተሰበ ያው ባለው ልክ ለሁሉም ያንቀን Now in business Ethiopian Quality Awards organization recognizes various organizations on its annual awards ceremony attended by President Saleh Orgzaudi. The award ceremony is said to be vital in inspiring manufacturers and service providers to focus on producing quality products and render quality services. Kasan Chani has the following account. Ethiopian Quality Awards organization hosts a big event annually where organizations, institutions and service providers get awarded based on their quality products and services. And the A's awarding so many private and government institutions from the manufacturing, service providers and higher education, health and construction sectors were recognized with the National Quality Award. Present at the ceremony, so President Salor Gazode appreciates the Ethiopian Quality Award ceremony so for Earth and Shape to recognize quality in different forms. If we are said to prosper, we need to reach to the point where we can compete with the rest of the world in every aspect. Our vision might be kept only on slogans unless we manage to compete internationally. Quality is not permanent. It should be inspected and improved every time. Speaking on the occasion, President of Addis Ababa University and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Ethiopian Quality Award Organization, Professor Tasa Wildahan Asad, quality is crucial for sustainable national development. <laughs> Even though competitors have been challenged by the fact that the corona pandemic was affecting the whole world and our country has been through a tough time, we proceed with rating them as quality should not be compromised. So we have only selected winners that scored more than 90% as usual. Chief Executive Officer of the Ethiopian Quality Award Organization Teodros Mabrato on his part said the competition was held following international standards and noted that various organizations ought to evaluate their quality performance appraisal. <laughs> Despite widespread complaints of patients about quality of hospitals, only five dared to be evaluated. From 20 ministries, only the transport ministry was okay with the evaluation. Only five out of the more than 58 universities became willing to participate in the quality award. Hotels, banks and other key sectors of the country did not dare show how qualified they are. This clearly indicates that there is still a long way to go to let our institutions know that quality inspection is indispensable. Organizations that were awarded to win the occasion tap the award critical to improve quality in every aspect. It is a, an amazing feeling and very humbling to be awarded the first uh, award for Ethiopian Quality Award for the total country. Um, it tells us that the hard work we've done in putting quality as part of our processes, looking after our customers, has been uh, recognized by the jury who came to assess us. Very true, because uh, when you win such an award, even the expectation should be higher. So that means from our environment, uh, our corporate social responsibility, looking after the people, the community where we sell our products, where we offer our services, uh, it gives us an opportunity to even continue improving. So we're very excited and uh, we look forward to even improving better from uh, where we are today. It was also indicated that domestic and foreign companies ought to fix their eyes on quality as a vital means to penetrate the international market. 
The government of Ethiopia has signed a joint development agreement with OCP Group, a Moroccan state-owned phosphate rock miner, uh, phos for, uh, foric acid manufacturer and phosphate fertilizer producer to implement a fertilizer project in the Red Dawa. The agreement was reached during a high-level delegation visit to Morocco led by Ahmed Shidi, Minister of Finance. The project will have an initial estimated investment capital of $2.4 billion during the first phase to develop a 2.5 million ton fertilizer production unit. The agreement also includes a second phase investment agreement with $3.7 billion. It is firmly believed that this project will have significant contributions to meeting Ethiopia's continuously growing demand for fertilizers. Like the Ethiopian Kebara drum, I came in playing the Ghanaian dondo to represent the unity in Africa. We can never talk about unity without talking about Ethiopia. Welcome to Addis Ababa, the home of the African Union and the capital town of Ethiopia. Two great men, a sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the emperor, Haile Selassie I, were very instrumental in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, now known as the African Union. These two understood that together we stand Divided reform. May the souls of these great Pan Africanists go marching on. Tonight, I am going to be taking you through a cultural, historic, and insightful tour through Ethiopia. When you come to Ethiopia, there are sites that you might want to visit, some of which include the Simeon National Park, with its high peaks, deep valleys, and sharp precipices stretching over 1,500 meters. You might also want to visit the ruins of Aksum, which represents the heart of ancient Ethiopia, when the kingdom of Aksum was the most powerful between the Eastern Roman Empire and Persia. You might also want to visit Tia, which is an archaeological site in the center of Ethiopia, south to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia prides itself in its diverse landscape and rich culture which is why you might want to visit so many cities in Ethiopia, some of which include Addis Ababa, Mabel, Landivela, Gonda, just to mention a few. Ethiopia, being the second most populated country in Africa, is the only country that has never been colonized by the West. The Italians tried to create a colonial crack on Africa through Ethiopia, but were defeated at the Battle of Adura. They hid on the hills looking down at the valleys of Adura with their guns, bows, and arrows and defeated the Italians. Did you know that Ethiopia is the only country with a 13 calendar system? What does this even mean? This means that when everybody else in the world has 12 months in the year, there are 13 months in Ethiopia. This is why I'm seven years younger, because while all of you are in the year 2021, it is still 2014 in Ethiopia. Interesting, isn't it? In fact, yesterday, September 11th, was a new year in Ethiopia. Malcolm Adis Ahmed. And finally, in our continental news, Guinean civil society invites, uh, invites ECOWAS to reconsider its demands regarding September 5 coup as current chairman of regional bloc the Economic Community of West Africa State, ECOWAS, Aku Fuadu heads a delegation to mediate the political crisis following the coup. Ghanaian President Nana Aku Fuadu arrived at Conakry Airport and was received by Guinea coup leader Lieutenant Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya on Friday. The bloc had imposed sanctions on Guinea's coup leaders and called for elections in six months in a demand for a quick return to civilian rule, a request deemed inappropriate by some activists. Quote, in quote, where was ECOWAS when Alpha Conde was changing the constitution? Where was ECOWAS when Alpha Conde wanted to run for a third term? Where was ECOWAS when the people of Guinea were suffering injustice, inequality, where was ECOWAS? Lamented Ibrahima Sori Mama, an activist. 
Guinness Janta leaders had earlier vowed Friday that deposed President Alpha Kundi would not be allowed to seek exile, saying they would not cave to mounting pressure from regional mediators who have imposed targeted sanctions after this month's coup. And finally, several hundred protesters marched through central Tunis on Saturday to demand a return to parliamentary democracy after a July power grab by President Kais Syed. The march was tightly marshaled by security forces on the ground and an interior ministry surveillance drone overhead, journalists reported. Most of the protesters were supporters of the Islamist-inspired Enada party, which formed the largest bloc in parliament before its dissolution by the president. On July 25, Syed sacked the government, suspended parliament, removed lawmakers' immunity, and put himself in charge of all prosecutions. He has renewed the measures for a second 30-day period and has yet to respond to calls for a roadmap for lifting them. Syed insists his actions are guaranteed by Article 80 of the Constitution, which stipulates the head of state can take exceptional measures in case of an imminent danger to national security. A quick reminder of the top stories. Ethiopian Quality Award Organization recognizes qualified institutions. And House Speaker briefs American Congresswoman Karen Bass on current alarming issues. And that's all the news there is for now. Many thanks for watching us. And